really don't know what I would have done if you said no. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to thank uh, Tim for the uh, kind words. And actually, I'm not going to stand behind this podium doing the whole presentation. You know, I'm going to come out because I'm a type of person that moves around. Actually, if you know me, uh, you'll know that about me. I'm never standing still. All right. Um, basically, what I want to talk about tonight is uh, cooperative economics. Okay, Ujima. Um Tell you a little bit uh, about me. I'm a, gra I'm a graduate of Cass Tech uh, High School. Gra <laughs> graduate of Wayne State University. Uh, graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in uh, Business Administration. I have about 15 years of uh, sales, marketing, and management experience. I uh, also have entrepreneurship experience. Uh, I worked in a a uh, startup company that was a uh, consultant firm, still is one, I managed that for about five years. Worked with one of my former college professors from Wayne State in that business. And uh, I'm also the uh, owner of the African History Network, okay? Uh, how many of you are on YouTube? How many of you watch YouTube videos? Anybody? Okay, you watch any of the, you watch any of the African Senate videos on YouTube, like Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, Dr. Ray Higgins, okay? You watch any of those videos, you probably come across uh, my channel on YouTube. I'm known as uh, MJ Rob 1914. Okay, so I have over 300 uh, video clips on that YouTube channel. A lot of those um, videos I have for sale in the back because that, that, they're on for sale at my website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com as well. Okay, so cooperative economics. What I want to do. I want to talk about, I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, it's going to be about 20 minutes. I want to talk, this is broken up into about three parts. First of all, I want to talk about why we don't start businesses, okay, uh, historically. Then I want to talk about why we need to start businesses. And then uh, I want to wrap up with some resources that can help those, uh, those of us who want to start businesses, maybe those of us, of us who own businesses. And then uh, I want to try to open it up for a couple of questions and answers. Because I really want this to be something that people can learn from. As opposed to me just giving you a bunch of information, I want this to be really helpful for you. Okay? So is that all right? All right. Then, uh, quick show of hands. How many of you own a business right now? Whether it's a storefront, uh, a brick and mortar business, eBay, doesn't matter. Okay. How many of you don't own a business but want to own a business? Okay, uh, everybody wants to own a business. Okay. Uh, right here, what's your name? Carissa. Carissa. Okay, you, you, you want to own a business, right? Well, why do you want to own a business? But, but he's uh, uh, independent corner, what? Auto dealership. Auto dealership. Okay, you can probably buy some right now with the change you have in your pocket, tell you the truth. All right. Um, Starting out, if you know anything about our spending habits, you already know that African Americans spend about $913 billion a year. Okay, that was the number last year, about $913 billion. We spend more than about $2.3 billion a day, okay? Now, the, the, the biggest problem with that is not so much how much we spend, but our spending habits. 98% of our dollars are spent with other people, people who don't look like us. About 95% were Europeans. 90, 98%, yeah, 98%. Exactly, exactly. Look at Detroit. I'm gonna get to that in just a minute. Hold on, you jumping ahead of me. All right, but 95% of our dollars are spent with European-owned companies, okay? 3% are spent with other ethnic groups. Asians, Chaldeans, Arabs, Hispanics, okay? Nothing against them. Oh, but only 2% of our dollars are spent with people who look like us, okay? So for every $1 billion that's spent, about 20,000, 50,000 jobs are created from that. So when we spend our dollars, we have to look at, each year we have to look at how many jobs are we creating for other people and what are we creating for ourselves? Okay, now if you look at Detroit, uh, how many of you have ever heard of Dr. Claude Anderson? Okay, I'm just checking, okay. I, go, I thought to some people they never heard about the Claude Anderson, okay? I'm just... Oh, no, I know Dr. Anderson. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dr. Anderson is deep. Um, when he did his study that uh, for the city council a few years ago, I have a copy of that study, it's about 100 pages. At the time, he stated that African Americans in Detroit only own 1% of the businesses in Detroit, okay? We, we make up about 85% 
of the Detroit population. The population is somewhere between 850,000, and I've heard estimates as low as 750,000. But we own about 1% of the businesses in Detroit, okay? Now, this is why you see the, hard, the hardship that we're suffering from these economic times. I mean, when down at Cobra Hall uh, about two, three months ago, when they were giving out the applications for the vouchers, and there were about 35,000 people that showed up, you didn't see a bunch of Koreans and Asians and Chaldeans standing in those lines. You saw us, okay? But we're the ones who spend our dollars at their stores that make them rich, okay? And it's known all around the world that you can come to the African American community anywhere in the U.S., set up a business and become a millionaire because we'll buy from everyone that sells sales. Okay, so so part of what I'm going to talk about is a little bit of the history behind that and how we have to change that. Okay, um, if you familiar with Dr. Anderson, you're familiar with uh, something called the doctrine of exclusion. Anybody familiar with that? Doctrine. Some people shaking their heads. Some people nodding their heads. Okay. Uh, you, you know that, let's go back a little bit, you know that Africans came to this country going back about 16,000 years, okay? We didn't just come here in 1619, we didn't just come here in 1555. Uh, even, if you, even, if you look at, even if you look at Africans being brought in as slaves, in the territory of South Carolina, 1526, Spaniards were bringing them in. That's even before 1555 or 1619. But even though we were here going back about 16,000 years ago, the Folsom people, in 1638, in the colony of Maryland, they instituted something called the Doctrine of Exclusion, which stated that black people should never be permitted to enjoy the fruits of white society. Okay? You can read Black Labor, White Wealth by Dr. Claude Anderson. He documents it in there. You can read uh, Poweronomics as well by Dr. Anderson. Uh, can everybody hear me in the back? Okay. All right. Because usually, say that again? Oh, okay. All right. Because usually I don't speak with a microphone, so uh, usually my mom was big enough for everybody to hear me. But, in the colony of Maryland, what that did was lay the foundation for racism as we know it in America. It was, it was later expanded uh, in around 1660, uh, 1680, and it was expanded to state that black people should, uh, should be a non-compensated, non-competitive, managed workforce for the express comfort building of white society. All the other colonies adopted this, and we're suffering from that legacy today, okay? If we, one of the biggest problems that has happened, and one of the, how should I put this, because I don't want to offend anybody. One of the, uh, one, the, one, the, one, the, one of the biggest, one of the biggest mishaps from the civil rights movement is that we didn't understand that this is a competition for wealth and resources. See, every other ethnic group understands that because every other ethnic group has their culture intact. So their culture teaches them that the only way that they're going to survive is to rely on one another. Okay, no other ethnic group, ethnic group teaches their children to go to school, get a good education, so you can work for someone else. Okay, so you can work for another ethnic group. We're the only ones in America to do that. All right. Now, I'm not trying to put down anybody that work for a European corporation because I do it myself. Okay, I'm not trying to put that down, but we have to understand it's not an either or, it's a both and. You can, you can do both, and when we do both, see the reasons why we have to create businesses uh, for ourselves. Number one, we tend to go to other businesses owned by other ethnic groups and get mad at them because they won't hire our children in their businesses. We go to, we go to their businesses and they have their kids working there, they have their family working there. Each time you go there, they have somebody new who just came over on the ship, okay? Because they sent money home to bring these people over. But see, we don't understand that they created those businesses for their children. They created those businesses with their people so they can pass something on to them. We have to understand that we have to create businesses for ourselves for the same reason, teach, okay? Teach, in, in, uh, in 2007, you had 127,844 African Americans who graduated with a bachelor's 